All right. The FBI now confirming that Iran did indeed hack into Donald Trump's presidential campaign, tried to do the exact same thing with the Kamala Harris campaign, didn't quite succeed there. But we really don't know all the details. Well, that's exactly what uh, Senator Josh Hawley wants to find out, the details, because they are dis disturbing. The uh, Missouri Republican kind enough to join us. Senator, do we know much more than I just outlined? No, I don't think so, Neil, but we need to get all of the facts. Here's the thing that really strikes me, though. Iran clearly does not want Donald Trump to be president of the United States again, and I can see why. Because when he was president of the United States, they were in a box. Now they're running rampant. Look what they're doing to Israel. Look what they're doing, funding terrorists all across the world. If there's an endorsement here in all of this, it's the fact that Iran hates Trump, and that really ought to tell voters a lot. But again, they were trying to get into the Harris campaign. We don't know the degree to which, you know, they succeeded there. But we do know that they seem to enjoy just messing with us. What do we do in response? Well, one thing, we ought to respond in kind in terms of cyber attacks. They shouldn't be able to turn on a light switch in Iran. We also ought to make clear that we're going to put them back in the box that Trump had them in. And there's no way better to do that, Neil, than to support the state of Israel. If you look at what's happening now at the DNC, man, Iran must be loving that. I mean, all of these pro-Hamas terrorist protests, all of these people talking about how terrible Israel is, wrapping themselves in the Hamas flag. That's exactly what Iran wants. They've got to be loving it. We should make it clear as a nation, we are going to stand with Israel. We're going to help arm Israel so they can defend themselves. And we are going to grind Iran's economy into powder. Let me uh, get your take on the race as it's going right now. For all I know, you might have been among those telling Donald Trump to stick to the issues. You got some winning issues. You just mentioned one with Iran and whether we're being too soft and, 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 too, and too sort of tentative in, in dealing with them. Uh, but we could talk about the economy and the border and all that. More lately, he's been doing that. What do you think? Listen, I think that Kamala Harris is weak. I think that she is a liberal, and I think that that's the key to the election right there. I mean, if you want the border open, 15 million illegals in this country, if you want them getting amnesty, and if you want to pay for their health care, then Kamala is your candidate. But if you want your children to be safe, if you don't want drugs on our streets, if you want your kids to be able to walk to the bus stop without getting shot, you better vote Trump. I mean, I think that this is a, an election about really basic choices, safety or chaos, the border closed or amnesty for 15 million illegals, your family getting ahead or your family ground into poverty. I mean, that's really the choice here. And the choice is clear, I think, for all of those issues. It's got to be Trump. So when you see her managing to tighten the gap in the polls and lead in some polls, they're all over the map and they all remain fairly within the margin of error. That is probably an understatement. So they're tight. What do you make of that? Oh, that doesn't bother me at all. Listen, I think she's getting a, she, she's getting uh, a, a, a total honeymoon period here for the media. That's to be expected. But this is why Republicans have got to carry the message to her. We can't let her get away from her record. You know, I've heard a lot of talk about how she doesn't have a lot of policy positions. That's not true, Neil. She's got a bunch of them. She has, she's been very clear on what she believes, and what she believes is disastrous for this country. She wants amnesty for 15 million illegals. She wants gold-plated health care coverage for illegals paid for by the taxpayer. She wants illegals to be, get better health care coverage than Americans are getting. I mean, there you go. This is what the campaign is about. And if you want to let people out of jail, she was opposed to cash bail. I mean, if you want to put criminals on the streets, then Kamala is the candidate. If you want your children safe, then it's Trump. I just think this is about basic fundamental things, and that's why Trump's going to win. You know, candidates are prone during election year to say things that people like to hear. Donald Trump isn't above this. As savvy as he is, he was the first to season the idea that, you know, waiters and waitresses tips shouldn't be taxed. Kamala Harris seized on that. He's also gone a little further to say that your Social Security shouldn't be taxed. But many in your own party, uh, Senator, have said that if you want to do something that could imperil Social Security, that, 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 that's one thing that, that could do it. What do, you, what do you say? Well, I say if you want to imperil Social Security, look what Kamala Harris wants to do. If you let 15 million illegals into the country, give them amnesty and put them on Social Security and Medicare, you will bankrupt those programs. We need to protect these programs and the people but who that, have that, paid that's into not, them. That's not happening right now. I, I, I know your point, but do you fear that by taking away the tax, uh, you know, that would apply to Social Security, many say you could be hastening the, the program's demise? Oh, I, I, I don't agree with that. I think okay. that the Trump proposal is a good one. But I think that, again, if you want to talk about how we're going to protect these programs for Americans who have paid into them, 
priority number one has got to be keep illegal immigrants out of them. And make no mistake, the whole idea of giving them amnesty is to make them eligible for all of these benefits, all of these government benefits to which they will have contributed nothing. This goes back, Neil, to the, these fundamental questions. I mean, are we going to actually preserve this country? Are we going to get wages up in this country? Are we going to close the border? Are our streets going to be safe? Those are the choices in this election. Do you see the Senate being flippable uh, right now? Uh, Senator Chuck Schumer is confident that, uh, that, that, that we'll be able to not only hang on to the Senate, but pick up a couple of states. I don't know whether he was talking your race, but what do you make of that? Listen, I think that Republicans are going to win the Senate. I think that we're going to win the House. And uh, certainly I'm going to do my part here in Missouri. We've got, a, we've got a close contest in Missouri, and I'm going to work every day to make sure that we bring home this race, right. that we do right by working people in the state. That's what's on the ballot here in my state. I've got an opponent who wants to get rid of all gas and diesel in our economy, Neil. So you talk about destroying this country, destroying the lives of working people. Just do that. Take away gas and diesel, take away their trucks, put farmers out of work. That's what Kamala wants to do, too. I mean, these, these people have really gotten to be nuts. And I think we've got to expose that.